what's going on everybody this is John Jake gaming on the mic here coming at you with a brand new episode of the Youngstown Dynasty not only on college hoops 2k8 but also on NCAA 06 we got ourselves another crossover episode but we want to talk a little bit about a baptism by fire man we are starting off with basically a game that's gonna help our athletic programs get a bunch of money we are taking on the number three team in college basketball the UCLA Bruins and you look at the difference between these two teams man uh, UCLA is just simply a lot better uh, Kirby jr. our head coach for the basketball program has his work cut out for him I mean what could be overall difference I mean UCLA they're an 88 overall we're a 69 nice they also have an 88 offense, 86 defense, you know, just really good across the board. Even our coach will be outmatched compared to UCLA's coach, so it's going to be a battle. Um, I obviously don't expect us to win our very first game of the season, but if we can be competitive in this one, that would be a really great thing for us. And yeah, man, only thing left to do is get out there on the basketball court and prove what we can do, man. So going to be a great episode for basketball and football in this episode so if you're excited about it make sure you go ahead smash that like button and then also hit that subscribe button if you do happen to be brand new and with that being said i'll see you guys on the court all right boys so we are now here at the poly pavilion home of ucla taking on this number three team in college basketball and you know what? No one's going to really come out here and think we can hang with these dudes. But if we can make things competitive and prove that, you know, we're a team that we can belong. We can stay on the same court as these guys. I feel like that would be a very successful game. But with all that being said, let's go ahead and jump right into tip-off. And we are going to be officially underway at Poly Pavilion. Taking on the number three team in America, the UCLA Bruins. As they will swing it inside to Pearson, but he can't get the layup to go. Here comes Birdie Footlock with the rebound in transition. Going to swing it around, gets it to Chris Gentry, and he will indeed get the very first bucket of this game. And we will take a 2-0 lead here early, as we will see Pearson trying to attack inside. They know what they want to do. They want to pound us in the paint, but... So far, our per, our post defense is hoarding as Seymour almost got the two and it slam. He will end up being fouled by Dang. And we're going to see Seymour go to the free throw line. He will make one of two free throws as we try to swing it around. But we end up getting the ball stolen from us. And now here comes UCLA getting it to Pratt and Pratt throws it down. Whoo! We might be in for a long day if we turn the ball over like that, but right now we are hanging tough with UCLA. We are still up by one, but we got to be able to go ahead and limit these turnovers. We are not doing ourselves any favors with the turnovers that we've been experiencing as Dang is going to swing it inside another slam dunk as it's now eight to seven. Dolman loses the ball, and that's just, that's just me still kind of worrying about College Hoops 2K8, man. We dribbled it off our foot. And we certainly got our work cut out for us if we want to compete with the best teams in college basketball in the future. And we will have to go ahead and take a timeout. First timeout that we had to take in this ballgame. Down by five. And we need a stop from our defense. And we need it yesterday. Pratt. We're going to dribble it on the perimeter, swings it around, gets it to Oliver, and he lays it up, and it gets it in. Even getting called for the foul on Chris Gentry. As this UCLA continues to extend their lead a little bit, now up by seven points in this one. As that was some really tough defense by Chris Gentry, but doesn't do anything to kind of prohibit any points from scoring as we get called for the goaltending so UCLA already starting to pull away a little bit down by nine and we are in desperate need of a stop and oh boy another score we have to call another timeout 
as we're about halfway through this first half of basketball as we're just trying to keep things under control keep the lead under 10 points as Doman attacks the paint gets it out to McDade and McDade is gonna swing it out in the perimeter and hits a nice 18 foot jumper to cut it down to six points for the time being but that offensive rebounding for UCLA has been an absolute problem as they continue to attack us on the interior as they will end up getting a couple of free throws 11 point lead for the Bruins we will get the rebound, swing it out to Birdie Footlock, looking for a lane to attack, and does get to the hoop, and that bucket will fall. The second bucket for Birdie Footlock in this one, as we're still down by 11. Watkins inside, again, attacking the interior, and that's why it's really important for us to go ahead, and we need some taller players, man. We don't have any centers on the roster, so... Whenever we uh, go up against teams that are more post-centric, that is going to cause some matchup issues. Something that we'll need to address through recruiting at least one way or the other. As Footlock will attack the paint, our tallest player on the team is going to lay it up and get another bucket in a six-point game for Birdie Footlock. As Hancock actually gets the rebound over Caden Doman. But we get the steal. Here comes Birdie going coast to coast. Bang! Slam dunk for Birdie Footlock as he goes off on number 22. O'Brien. He didn't know what hit him. And we get the slam dunk. And we're still hanging in there. Four minutes left to play here in the first half as some multiple offensive rebounds for UCLA is going to cause that bucket. Now down by 11. Chris Ty gets his first deal of the game. We'll get to attack the hoop. Going to draw it back a little bit. And gets it out to Jordan Andrews who finds a lane. And at 5 foot 8 he throws it down. Oh look at those hops by the short man Jordan Andrews. Who's only 5 foot 8 mind you. And still throws it down none of the less. Giving some teams some momentum. And all of a sudden now. It's just a six-point game. We are hanging with UCLA. Savanovic gets it out to Jordan Andrews. Andrews looks for the screen and finds a way to get into the paint. And another bucket for Jordan Andrews. He's been a spark plug off the bench for us here. As a four-point lead for UCLA. Darren with a corner jumper, and that will also fall. As we're down to the last moments here of this first half. Chris Ty attempting a free, but it's going to be short. Here comes UCLA. Five seconds left to play. Going inside to Darren, and Darren throws it down. And that is going to end the first half. We are hanging tough against UCLA. But that being said, though, we are down by eight. And it seems like they'll have momentum as well going into the second half. So we go ahead and jump into the second half of play as we still are facing that eight point deficit. But this might help to cause a little bit of nice little layup going coast to coast with Caden Doman as that's the first points of the game for the custom recruit at point guard. He plays a little bit better in football in my opinion. As Chris Ty gets it to Doman again, he's gonna draw the foul on Pearson. That will be his third personal foul, so UCLA is in a little bit of foul trouble with a couple of their players as we're still down by seven despite the free throws oliver takes it inside gets his rebound though and oliver is going to be able to go ahead and put it up and back to a nine point lead but not going down without a fight footlock looking to attack and bang party footlock Throws it down with some absolute authority. In a seven point game now. Seymour also looking to throw it down. And Youngstown State going on a little bit of a run. Just a two possession game. Oliver with the post shot. Hancock can't make it in. Ferdy with the rebound. Looking to attack. Looking inside. Gets it to Seymour. And Seymour will lay it up and it is good. And all of a sudden, it is just a one possession game here 
Although Oliver has something to say about it. Third offensive rebound for Oliver. And it's back to five points. But Chris Gentry gets to steal. Footlock attacking. Bang! Another dunk by Birdie. Footlock. And this time makes Oliver an absolute victim. How about putting that on a poster? And a four-point game hanging tough with a number three team in college basketball. Jones looking to attack the paint, and he will lay it up. And that will be good. Cam Jones getting his first points of the game. As Chris Ty will look to attack himself. He also has some hops. He doesn't even know just how to throw the football. He can also slam it down as well. And all of a sudden, this game is now knotted up. And Chris Ty's layup is going to give us a lead here with 10.33 left to play. UCLA does have to go ahead and use a timeout. And we got them right where we wanted them. But that being said, UCLA, they know a thing or two about shooting the basketball. So it's all knotted back up at 48 apiece. And we might have just given them the lead back and we certainly will with Darren who will lay it up as a, the turnovers continue to mount up but Youngstown we get a stop of our own here comes Doman laying it up to Chris Gentry bang dunk for Chris Gentry it is all knotted up at 50 apiece with six minutes left to play here in this ball game are we gonna try to pull the unthinkable Gentry Bang! Nine dunks on the game. And it's a two-point lead for Youngstown. Make it four-point lead. As we get into the last five minutes of this second half, are we going to make the comeback happen? Parker going inside to Seymour. And Seymour will throw it down as well. They are now officially on fire from the field. Four-point game. Parker gets the steal. Looking for a three-pointer. Gets it out to Seymour. Seymour lays it up, and it's going to be good. And another timeout for UCLA as they are now going to be in some serious trouble. Three and a half to play in this game. Can we hang on? It's been an absolute slugfest. And how about the fight by these guys? Win or lose? As Chris Ty, he's actually going to pull for a free, and that might be the dagger. Chris Ty making the only three that we've made this entire game. Makes it seven points and sometimes it's just a little bit better to be lucky than it is to be good. As we put the finishing touches in what's probably going to be seen as one of the more improbable upsets in all of college basketball. And oh my goodness gracious, we actually do end up pulling it out. Youngstown State in its opener plays UCLA and upsets the number three team in all of college basketball doing so with defense only allowing UCLA to score 61 this point birdie footlock gonna be named your player of the game all right boys so we actually did the unthinkable here we actually went ahead and beat the number three team in America. We beat them by a score of 69, which is very nice, by the way, and to 61. So how about this to get things going? And even holding UCLA to 35% from the field, none of us really shot the free ball very well. Both of us were one for 11, but hey, we found a way to win. It wasn't pretty at times, but we did get it done and that's what i care about the most now checking out the stats for our guys real quick starting with our starting lineup birdie footlock led the team in points today ended up having a really good game actually 14 and 8 five steals and a block to go with it Seymour actually also came through with a great game 13 points eight rebounds three assists two steals but definitely more of a group effort. I mean, we saw Medade end up with seven points off the bench, so that's dope. Jordan Andrews, custom prospect, five points, two assists, and a steal. And then the other two starters that played some pretty good basketball, Caden Doman, seven, six, three, and four, did a little bit of everything. Need to cut down those turnovers, though. And then Chris Ty, 
ended up with nine points, five rebounds, and a steal. Also saw Chris Gendry with eight and eight and seven performance. So good day for our guys. And surprisingly, y'all, we are one and zero oh to begin our basketball season. Not only were we competitive with UCLA, but we got the win against UCLA. So I'm really excited to see what else we can do over the course of this season. All right, so it actually does seem like we... I actually didn't realize this when we first started this episode. We were in the O'Reilly Auto Parks Classic, and we are in the final against Weber State, man. So Weber State, they did end up winning 55-53 to against Liberty. So we got an opportunity here to go ahead and... Yo, see what we can do, man. Let's we'll see how we can go ahead and do things against Weber State. And hang on, we gotta go ahead and see. Uh, let's go ahead and see it to the end of the game here. And we end up getting blown out, unfortunately. Weber State takes care of business against us, ends up winning 68 to 4. Whoa! Did Weber State win or did we end up winning? I. I'm pretty sure we were the ones that ended up uh, like losing this one, but Samore did lead the team again with points. He ended up with 14 points. Chris Gentry, he ended up with 13, but nobody else was in double digits. That's why we took the L in this one. But beyond our tournament matchup, we actually only had one other game in the month of November, and that is against St. Francis in Pennsylvania. And we take care of business there as well. So we improve to 2-1. and one. Actually, a little bit better than I anticipated. Um, we had definitely a lot of contributions coming from our bench. Cam Jones scored 12 points off the bench. Cohen had 11. Sigovic ended up with 11 and 6. So great performances. Birdie Footlock. I don't know what happened to Birdie Footlock, man. No points, two rebounds. We'll check to see if he got hurt, but... Chris Gentry did step up. He was he had a double double, 10 and 10. Doman ended up with a couple of assists, and then Chris Ty did end up with five points, two rebounds, two assists, and a steal to go with it. So definitely interesting in how we won, but a win is a win nonetheless. But even though things are just getting started over on the hardwood, we are really seeing things heat up on the gridiron. We are actually in the last month of the regular season matter of fact and we are currently riding a four game winning streak we're six and four on the season so far and we do also have our final home game of the season we got senior day coming up here man jacksonville state jacksonville state man they're a solid football team they're d's across the board we're d minus d d minus ourselves but that being said you know we got a hot streak going on, so it's going to be on us to make sure that when we step on this football field, that we don't allow that winning streak to come to an end. Because I'm thinking if we can win one more game, then we should be secured to go ahead and go to a bowl game. I want to finish on a two-game losing streak and then hope that maybe the NCAA guys show love and get us into a bowl game that way. So that being said, I will go ahead and see you guys on the field. I'll catch you when we get started with this matchup against Jacksonville State. All right, boys. So we got ourselves a massive dub on the hardwood. Let's see if we can make something shake on senior day for the football team. And how about that? Getting us going. Huge sack on Henderson. And we get him to a third and long. As Henderson will try to jump back. The pass but it's going to be intercepted by Franklin. And Franklin trying to get to, into the end zone. But we do run out of juice a little bit there. But how about this by our defense? Getting ourselves going on an insanely fast start. We are now going to go ahead. And we're going to take over at the 10-yard line. Just a great job by our linebacker. Just did not have the wheels to get it into the end zone, unfortunately. But I do know someone that does have those wheels. Star tailback, Adam Hayden, who's going to run it into the end zone. And is going to get it in there. Touchdown, Youngstown State. And the Penguins are going to strike first on senior night. Taking a 7-0 lead over Jacksonville State here in Big Ten Conference play. 
So we got an early 7-0 lead that we do get to enjoy as Brands. No, it's a play action. Looking downfield, it's Martin. And Franklin, who had the interception, cannot stay in pace with Martin. And that was just a mismatch that Jacksonville State exploited. Just did not have the wheels to keep up. And it's going to be an easy touchdown for Jacksonville State. They will indeed strike back, making it 7-all here. As now things are currently all knotted up at 7 apiece. As Jacob Langford is going to lay out and make the catch. So we at least get our first completion of the day. We'll see if we can get a second completion here. As we look down the left-hand side, looking for Cam Jones. And Cam Jones hauls it in. 30-yard pass. Going to go for a massive first down. And we will indeed be in field goal range. But Hayden wants a little bit more. Almost gets it into the end zone. But brought down inside the 5-yard line. We'll see if we can make this two touchdowns and two possessions. Ty. Rolling right. He's looking for the end zone. He's going to run for it. He's going to get it. Touchdown, Youngstown State. And the Penguins will go ahead and reestablish the lead. As, take a look as Chris Ty. He won the throw that football. Didn't like the idea of throwing it into coverage. So he just went in there and ran it in himself. Youngstown State taking a 14-7 lead. As the ball is back in the hands of Jacksonville State as Henderson, he wants to throw it deep and actually does find Hawley. At about midfield, it's going to be a huge first down. As Henderson will throw again, this time looking for Wesley and looks like it was Jordan Andrews that ends up getting burnt, but at least he did end up going ahead and making the tackle as the Gamecocks are looking to tie this thing right back up, going to Williams for the carry, and also picking up a first down. So goal line situation here for Jacksonville State as it's a play action for Henderson, rolling to his left and finds Hall into the end zone. Touchdown, Jacksonville State. And the Gamecocks will tie this thing up once again, and it's now gonna be 14 all here as we will be ready to go ahead and take this kickoff. We have had some success with our special teams unit so far this season, and that is not going to change anytime soon. Oh, never mind. I thought we were going to be able to get out of there, but instead, we're going to see a penalty clipping on Holbert. So half the distance to the goal because of it, and now we start from our own 12-yard line, but we got a really special player here. Look at those cuts by Adam Hayden, man. He is absolutely special. We are really going to miss him when he does graduate. What Final home game for Adam Hayden. And he is certainly making it count. Look at this. Getting out of all of that and brings it down inside the 35-yard line. What a big-time run for Adam Hayden. But eventually... We have to throw the football too. Third and 12. Over the middle. We find James. And James does come down with the catch. And we will find ourselves in the red zone. First and 10. Ty hands it off to Adam Hayden. He gets it outside. Looking for the end zone. Touchdown. Youngstown State. Let's go, baby. Second rushing score of the game for Adam Hayden. As it was going to be a, a option play dictated by the running back. But he knew he can get to that corner himself too. And you know why worry man when you can get a touchdown of your own. And we will take a 21-14 lead. But things might change here shortly though. As Garcia gets loose on the following kick return. And it will be a touchdown for Jacksonville State. Going to be a 21 all game. And what you're about to see unfold, you would not believe happens unless I actually showed it to you guys, right? We saw the kick return by Jacksonville State, and then we respond with a kick return of our own strong in the end zone. And it's going to be a strong return to give us back the lead. So we got a kickoff return for a touchdown. They got a kickoff return for a touchdown, right? So got all of that happening in the background. And let's see if we can actually 
force Jacksonville State's offense to work a little bit. But instead, Barry is going to get loose. So it's not going to be one kick return, not two. Oh, no. It's going to be three kick returns in a row that are going to end in touchdowns. Eventually, the madness does stop. But this thing is now all of a sudden really all knotted up at 28 apiece. As we will take over with a little more than a minute left here in this first half. And Mario Robinson, he actually sprains his wrist, so he is going to be done for the rest of the game. As we desperately need a third down. Ty, looking left, going to throw it to Jacob Langford. And it's incomplete. Langford drops the pass. And that is going to make it fourth down. We will have to go ahead and punt this thing away. So now 48 seconds left here in this first half is Henderson. He's going to look to also trying to get a little busy with it. He will get himself down in about midfield before Jacksonville does take its first time out. Is now second and 10. Henderson looking to throw again. This time finding Hawley. Going to throw this thing into the pocket. So a third and five coming up here with just 12 seconds left to play. They'll need one more first down to get in the field goal range, but they won't get it. Getting it out to Mario Branch. They're actually going to go for it here on fourth down. Responding with a 5-2 set. We'll see what Henderson does. It's actually a pass over the middle, but it's dropped. And our defense stands up. We get the turnover on downs. And that is going to end the first half, actually. And we got a really good game still. All knotted up at 28 apiece. So welcome back to the second half of this action between Jacksonville State and Youngstown State University. As we will take the kickoff to begin the second half. And here comes Strong. Strong down the sideline. He's already got one kick return. How about let's make it duos? Two touchdowns for Strong here. Let's go, baby. 95-yard kick return. And we will take a 35-28 lead. Not to mention, we forced Jacksonville State to punt this football away. We do end up getting a free and out. But we do end up, you know, we fumbled the ball. Wow. Just when momentum was swinging towards our way, we fumbled the ball. And Jacksonville State is going to take over after a free and out. Defense has to come back on the field this time deep in their own territory. We need a huge play from our defense. Branch swinging it to the right. He's going to take it to the outside and will just barely be knocked out of bounds. If it wasn't for that last line of defense, that would have indeed been a touchdown. As a couple plays later now, we got still another third and long as Henderson dropping back to pass he's gonna move right he's gonna try to run it towards the end zone and sure enough no he fumbles it that fumble was out of bounds and I don't know why that quarterback is celebrating I don't think he realized what just happened he fumbled the football out of bounds and we're gonna take over at, on the red zone so defense comes through with a big play we get the FOMA recovery technically, but we could not capitalize though. So the game still remains 35 to 28 as we fumble. Oh, we needed that fumble. Almost got another turnover from our defense, but just didn't quite happen for us. Is now second and nine after the fumble as Henderson will throw it. Silva almost had the sack but is able to slide out of the way and gets it out to his star tailback, Mario Branch, in order to pick up the first down. As now, second and seven, cutting from the 40 as Mario Branch. No, it's another play action. This time we got some pressure, and yet somehow managed to get it off through an accurate enough ball in order to pick up yet another first down, and that's going to end three quarters. So here we are, fourth quarter of play. We've really only seen the kick return for the touchdown. And now we're here in this fourth quarter, man. One quarter away from taking care of business here on senior day. We got a fourth and five coming up. Henderson 
Gonna drop back. He's gonna throw this one deep on a fourth down, and we just got mossed. Oh my gosh. We got mossed at the worst time. That would have really helped us out there, but instead, a second down is gonna lead to a touchdown. And this thing is gonna be all knotted up now at 35 apiece. And if we end up losing this game, that fourth down call, that Moss in the red zone, we're going to be thinking about that a lot now as we cut it down to just one minute left here in the fourth quarter. Another deep throw. It's going to be connected to Wesley. And Wesley will be brought down, but not before reaching the nine-yard line. And Jacksonville State will go ahead and take their very first timeout. They still got two timeouts left to work with. Henderson going to swing it to Mario. Branch and Branch does take care of business. And with 46 seconds left to play, Jacksonville State will now take the lead. And it's going to all come down to our offense. We need to drive down the field in 43 seconds and get a touchdown. No ifs, ands, or buts. That will start us off well. A throw to Brown. We will take one of our timeouts, and we will have two more timeouts left to work with. Let's cut it to a couple plays later. Third and ten. Need a play from our quarterback. Ty, looking. Going to try to throw it over the middle, and it's deflected away. Looking for that slot. We do not get it. And it's going to all come down to this. 25 seconds left. Ty, scrolling right. He's looking. He sees Cam Jones. He's going to watch it. And it's going to be caught by Cam Jones. Second timeout will be called. But now, Youngstown State in striking distance to tying the game right back up. You cannot make this up right now. Can we get 16 more yards? Ty looks right. Finds hands, bro, of a tight end. And he will get himself out of bounds. And it will at least stop the clock temporarily. As we will now have the ball inside the five-yard line. You can already tell our tight end is so excited right now. As now, first and goal. Ty looking. He's going to scramble left. Nobody's going to be there to contain him. And Chris Ty will find the end zone. Touchdown, Youngstown State. And how about the patience by Chris Ty? Didn't like what he saw in the pocket. So we just used that mobility, and now we're going into overtime. We get some overtime action on senior night. Oh, baby, we are on the warpath to something truly magical here on senior day. And we will trot out our defense first. We'll see if they can do what it takes to make sure that Jacksonville State does not get into the end zone. Henderson facing some pressure, but it's intercepted by Smith. Let's go! And how about the presence of mind by Smith? You have to check out this interception. He was originally on Mario Branch, but then once the ball got into the air, this is actually the perfect angle. He's moved back and baits the interception. That is so amazing. And we now run it with... Adam Hayden one more block we're gonna get it and it's good Youngtown State is gonna win the football game walking it off here in overtime as we will go ahead and win this game against Jacksonville State the blocking was perfect on that play and there's that final score man we end up winning set our seventh game of the season and something that I haven't seen in a while, man. Jim Fousen getting the Gatorade bath in this one. The seniors, you already know, really appreciate what Jim Fousen has done for their football program. So, man, you want to talk about an absolute classic? We sure got one here on Senior Day, man. I mean, that was a game to remember. We end up winning this one 48-42. Truly a back-and-forth affair. Again, it was one of those games where the scoring slowed down a little bit in the second half, but we found a way to pull it out. We got that interception, 
and we were able to win it from there, man. So great, great game from our guys. We still need to work on some things from special teams, but we'll jump into the stats for our guys today. Chris Ty wasn't great throwing the football again, but he limited the turnovers. 9 for 22, 215 yards. Did have that interception, but that was from a Hail Mary. Running the ball, though, we were absolutely electric. Adam Hayden ended up with 14 carries, 146 yards, and three touchdowns on the ground. Chris Ty did have negative yards, but also found the end zone a couple of times there as well. Receiving-wise, Ty James led the way with three catches for 65 yards, with also David Brown and Cam Jones getting multiple catches. Cam Jones, by the way, the closest to a 100-yard day, ended up with 84 yards that did lead all of our receivers in this one and finally on the defensive side of the football we ended up seeing jordan andrews as well as mark swain leading the team in tackles swain particularly with a couple of sacks no no or no, a couple of tfls no sacks though for our guys but got a couple of interceptions alonzo smith which ended up sealing the deal and then craig franklin as well he had that interception the first quarter that did set up our first touchdown. Not to mention, we even made them fumble the football a couple of times. Granted, we did not get uh, any recoveries in this one, but I think we won the turnover battle, if you really think about it. And, I mean, that was the difference, man. That's how we end up winning these games. You know, it wasn't pretty as times. It was definitely in doubt a close battle, but the winning streak will indeed stay alive. So in the meantime, we did have one more game after that, and that was the matchup against Southern Utah. And we actually do end up taking care of business against Southern Utah. We end up seeing a 31 to 10 win, uh, which I'm pretty sure that um, these, these stats for Hayden probably are not right. I think that might be his season stats, which great year, by the way, um, if that actually is the case. So that's really uh, good to see. 28 total touchdowns. I mean, we were up 31 to 3 and probably uh, moved on the brakes just a little bit. But great win for our program. We end the year on a six-game winning streak. And not only that, we are actually also in the top 25 as well as of right now seeing where we currently are in the bcs projections are we in the top 15 not quite so we're not in the top 15 in the bowl rankings but if you check over at the coaching rankings though we are towards the top there we are currently ranked number 17 in the entire nation man great job by our program in order to get to where we're at right now, man, we got some losses. Uh, David Reed ends up out for nine weeks. And the greatest part about all of this is that, you know, we haven't had any discipline issues. So that's been a really good look for our program as well. And because we are doing such a great job, at least, you know, in terms of being in the top 25, we are actually looking at a pretty good bowl game as of right now. We're actually looking at a trip to the Outback Bowl because it's always been a Big Ten versus SEC. And right now they do have us going up against Furman, who's five and six. They currently are running a two game winning streak, but we are a little bit better than them on paper. So we'll see if that holds up and I'll sim through the end of the regular season just to see if this projection does actually hold up okay so it does look like we do also get our first couple of commits as well both of which are for the the for the trenches man we got four star center nick riggs and he was just excited about how he can start right away and he can certainly do that even though he doesn't have the highest potential that he's from ken ohio and then from bowling green ohio we picked up randy sudden a four-star defensive tackle and it wasn't as big as a draw as I thought it was gonna be but he does end up signing on the dotted line for us anyway so we got a couple of four stars um, that we can definitely build around we're gonna go through these conference championship games real quick and then we'll then actually find out what bowl game we're actually going to okay so it is confirmed that we are actually going to 
the Outback Bowl, and it is going to be set for the new year on January 1st. So I am super pumped for that uh, moving forward. We, of course, did not have anybody on the Heisman Trophy list for this year. Looks like it went to Kerry Williams of New Mexico State. So, yeah, man, I'm super happy about how this first season has gone so far. And, you know, if you like what you've seen thus far in this episode, in this series do me a favor man smash that like button hit subscribe if you happen to be brand new next episode we will have some basketball action and then for the, for the month of december and then january will be the standalone episode for the outback bowl so the outback bowl will be two episodes from now we'll get a basketball double header in the next one in the meantime i hope you guys are all out there having a good one take care everybody